think of a time you had difficulty sleeping and didn't feel like eating. A time when you lost motivation to do anything and had no energy. Most people are probably thinking of the last time they had a cold or flu. But one in five people are likely thinking of the last time they were depressed. The symptoms I just described are sickness behaviors. The things our body does when it's ill and needs time to recover, which works pretty well for physical illnesses, like viruses, but not for depression. So why is it that depressed individuals experience sickness behaviors? Depressed people's bodies seem to overreact, and they respond to life stress the same way they respond to infection, with inflammation, as if the stress is a threat to one's physical integrity. But not just any life stress. Social rejection is the single type of life event most likely to trigger the onset of a depressive episode, and my research is examining why. This is key to better treating depression. Now, when any one of us is rejected, we experience an automatic emotional and physiological response. Being the last picked in gym class, your partner leaving you. We feel distressed, and parts of our brain become activated just as they do when the body is in physical pain. This response makes sense. We need to notice we're being rejected so that we can do something about it to prevent further fallout. Think back to our hunter-gatherer ancestors. Being ostracized from the group often meant death. Therefore, our bodies have evolved to respond to rejection in this very powerful way. So we've all been rejected, and it hurts all of us. Why is it only some individuals become depressed? I found that when I reject individuals in the lab by excluding them from a game, after a short period of time, most individuals have moved on and no longer report feeling distressed. But depressed individuals, they still report feelings of isolation. They suffer longer. This is because they're still thinking about the rejection, are interpreting information in a more negative way, and remembering more negative information. This negative style of thinking likely sends a message to the body that a catastrophe, as threatening to survival as infection, has occurred. This triggers the inflammatory response, and over time leads to the sickness behaviors that, until now, our models of depression could not explain. Understanding this process will allow us to better treat and prevent depression, so that one day, if I talk about sickness behaviors, we'll all be thinking about the flu. Thank you.